This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Gamefly. Coming up on Destructoid, Saints Row takes to the skies, Peter Molyneux wants you to feel the magic, and Google Plus games are here, say goodbye to your productivity. All this and more happening right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy here we are Friday. again. Happy Friday, welcome to Friday. our Friday Fun Day We're show live. live thing. We're live, we're live right now. It's we're feeling so alive. I heard some good news broke right some before Some big this. news, conveniently right before we were done writing the script. Um, just a few hours ago, Valve made a big announcement and it looks like there's a new Counter-Strike game that's gonna be available next year. It's called Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or CSGO as people are already calling it, and it's gonna be a multi-platform release, as in PC and Mac via Steam, as well as XBLA and PSN. It's gonna have new, new weapons, uh, maps, characters, as well as some updated versions of old favorites. I think uh, D Dust, D E Dust. I don't know how to say it. You guys have weird underscores in your names. Um, that was an example given. Uh, it's being developed by Valve along with Hidden Path Entertainment, the guys who worked on CS Source. You want to hear the best part? It's going to be playable at PAX Prime and Eurogamer. Yeah. So um, that sneaky Gabe Newell fellow is awfully sneaky, and uh, we should have more on that as as it comes up. But um, that just came out a few hours ago. So shh. That's actually pretty exciting. We That's used to cool. have uh, Counter Strike tournaments at my old job after work, and I consistently kicked people's asses I don't when that they got at up all. to go to no. the bathroom. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. So, more excitingly, this morning I got to play Saints Row the Third. Now, um, let me tell you, I really wish that I could talk about it, but it's embargoed until next week, so I can't really say a whole lot. You're such a tease. Um, luckily, we do have this video showing off the second mission of the game, which uh, is, is recent and fresh. Uh, quick refresher, Saints Row the Third starts with the Saints running Stillwater. They are celebrities. They have energy drinks named after them, and they are ballsy. Uh, the first mission consists of you robbing a bank with your gang dressed up in Johnny Gat masks. That's Johnny Gat, one of your buddies. So he's wearing a mask of himself, that's pretty ballsy. And then they're going to airlift the vault out of the bank with a helicopter. The plan kind of backfires because it turns out the bank is run by a giant multinational organization called the Syndicate, and that's where things get interesting. In this new trailer, Philippe Laurent, the head of the Syndicate, uh, kidnaps the Saints, that's you and Shondi and Gat, and is holding you at gunpoint on a plane. And of course, the logical solution in this situation is to shoot your way out of the plane and uh, beat people up, punching them in the crotch along the way, and um, then jumping out of the back of the plane and uh, dodging dudes and sh shooting dudes and dodging burning wreckage in midair because that totally makes sense. Then of course, of course, the plane decides to swoop around and ram you in midair. So what do you do? You shoot out the windshield and you dive through the fucking plane. That is one mission. I really want to tell you more about this game, but I can't yet. Um, so that's probably gonna be Wednesday's show when we talk about it. If you guys have not checked out the first two Saints Row games, I highly recommend it. You can pick up a two pack of them on Amazon for 20 bucks. So if you're chomping at the bit for the third, it's a couple months off, so I would recommend doing this. You must have had a fun morning, Oh, huh? it was great, it was <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm actually kind of glad that we reported on Saints Row the Third first because it's all downhill from there. Don't say it's that. It's literally the most exciting thing we have to talk about today, starting with Google Plus Games. They say sometime in the next few days now we should be getting that magical games button at the top of our G Plus profiles that allow us to play games, see game updates from our friends, browse invites that you've received, and check out our achievements. Now, I'll admit, I'm a little wary of this. Um, I dabbled in Facebook games, which don't exactly get praise for being revolutionary in the industry. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've referred to them as soul-sucking time wasters on this show before, but mm -hmm. I'm willing to give Google Plus games a shot. They've already got a handful of launch titles, including all of the predictable ones you'd expect, like Angry Birds. They've got Bejeweled Blitz, Sudoku, which is a personal favorite. Uh, Zynga Poker, they've got a bunch of single titles, and um, Dragon Age Legends. There's 16 right now. I'm sure that number is going to increase by the day. In fact, Zynga's probably interviewing and hiring people like right this second. So get on that. Even though a lot of the games are the same between G Plus games and Facebook games, G Plus games are supposed to be better because your games stream on G Plus is completely separate from your main activity feed. So you won't get bombarded with updates about so and so you haven't seen in six years reaching level 50 in Mafia Wars oh because my, oh my god, who cares? Oh my god, you want to play allies and enemies? Ah. <laughs> That's our impression of people on Facebook. Ah, I play Zynga. <laughs> 
So if you haven't, um, if you have Google Plus and you haven't seen the logo on the top of your screen yet, don't worry. They're rolling it out gradually, so your time will come. In the meantime, here's a promo video that Google released for their games. Oh yeah! And look at all those smiling faces. Aww. It's like a Nintendo commercial, isn't it? God, they're having a blast there. Except nobody actually looks happy while playing social games. I should know. Your eyes just gloss over, and then you go into this weird trance-like state, almost like highway hypnotism, and then your hand starts to cramp up a little bit, and then the feeling of hopelessness washes over you. Oh shh, Tara. I mean, it's fun for a yeah. while, you know, but it, it gets old, is yeah. what I'm saying. I, I can understand. We actually got a question, a comment. Um, oh. Dark Inner Essence, no, that was a different one. I will answer that. Um, the, the Clip Cult said, why is Google Plus game news when, go when they aren't that good? Because it's Google, and because they could, it's video games. They could shoot us out of these ch these this studio with their space laser if they felt like it. Yeah, even um, if you don't personally like them, millions, yeah. literally moms millions of people do, still Moms everywhere do, and we it. love moms. Um, Digital Spoon said, "Never played Saints Row. Always thought of it as a GTA clone." I felt the same way. Uh, it's like everything fun about GTA crossed with everything that's not girly about The Sims. So you basically make a guy who looks like you, and then you go beating the shit out of hookers. So. Go nuts. Win-win. Yeah, really. right? Um, you want to talk about our next game for a Let's bit? Let's talk about that. man the chat. You can man the chat. Yes, there are men in the chat. Um, one game we have not talked about a whole lot is Fable, The Journey. Um, and that's probably because it's a, it's a Kinect game. Um, we should be talking about it, though, because since it's an unreleased Fable game, it will undoubtedly be a work of sheer innovative brilliance, unlike the previous Fable games, which lost all their appeal after being released. And don't get mad at me. I'm just paraphrasing what Peter Molyneux has said in the past. So, Fable the Journey is a Kinect game, it's magical and whimsical, um, and when it was shown off at E3, there was a lot of backlash because it looked very much like an on-rails game. Molly New commented on this before and said that it was not on rails, but that the navigation system in the E3 demo has been removed. Now it, it looks like, oh, well, sorry, wrong voice. Um, now it looks like the kinds of attack in Journey are gonna be limited. Uh, here's a quote from Peter Molly New. We could have done melee weapons, but the one thing I hate about melee weapons, and guns as well, is that the, the human brain is encoded to expect recoil from those things. The thing about magic is there's nothing encoded in your mind about how it should feel, so no guns and no swords. So basically you just cast spells by waving your arms at stuff. Peter Molyneux himself was unavailable for comment further, so we consulted with Peter Molyneux too, or Peter Molyneux on Twitter. Here's my favorite. You play as a granddad. You can only interact with your grandchildren by playing a saxophone, which is required to escape a dreamlike castle. That's so innovative. Oh my god, you should really follow him. Everything he says is just pure innovation. He sounds very tender. Yes, he's, yeah. Anyway, um, the Fable games are very cool. I don't mean to make fun of them. I just find the stuff that Peter Molyneux says to be pretentious and whimsical. Um, can you guys imagine Peter Molyneux saying this stuff as, like, if he wasn't a game designer? Like, imagine another job in which Peter Molyneux could say these things and I will do a dramatic reenactment of it in just a moment. Wave Before your arms. you do that, Vel... Vela Dowen? Go on. Uh, says, please say Skyrim. I think it is the hottest word on Earth. Sky Skyrim. Skyrim. Okay, let's, let's take a word sponsor. from our sponsor. Contrary to popular belief, Gamefly is not a type of insect made out of sports equipment. Gamefly is actually the largest online video game rental service, which offers a selection of over 7,000 games for a wide variety of consoles and handhelds. Plans start at just $15.95 a month and allow members to rent one to four games at a time. You can keep the games as long as you like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, you can send it back to Gamefly and they will send you the next game on your list. Or if you really like the game you're playing, you can just go to the Gamefly website, click on Keep It, and the game is yours for a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals for no extra charge. Destructoid fans get a 15-day a free trial when they go to www.gamefly.com slash destructoid. And I highly recommend you do that because it, it allows us to be here wearing these fancy, yeah. fancy cardigans it that we're wearing. Yeah. Yeah, this is from Target. It's not fancy. Anyway, uh, we're all familiar with Origin, right? EA's downloadable game service. Nobody's really been too keen on the idea of it up until now, um, but at least we could console ourselves by saying, you know, whatever, I just won't download games from EA anymore, I'll just buy them. Well, guess what, guys? EA is making us look the fool! 
As it turns out, even if you buy a retail copy of Battlefield 3 for the PC, you're going to need the Origin service running on your computer to play the game. That news came courtesy of BF3blog.com, who hasn't confirmed yet whether or not you'll also need the service if you buy the game from a different downloadable games website, like Direct to Drive. They have a whole bunch of them. Um, although they suspect that is the case. And frankly, I wouldn't be all that surprised at this point if they saw a lot fewer people buying this game on PC. And then again, if your PC is actually good enough to run Battlefield 3, memory issues probably aren't a problem for you anyway. So speaketh to us, community. I want to know, has this affected your decision on whether or not to buy Battlefield 3 for PC? Does Origin really deserve all this hate that we seem to give it every episode? Leave us comments in the chat. Please let us what, know. What, do people have opinions on it yet? Uh, people mostly just want to hear me talk about Skyrim. Yeah. I wish there is no uh, Skyrim news at the moment, I don't think. Um, no. Dragons are still cool. Skyrim is still awesome. Um, if we I if I were to, to have sex with a video game character, Mr. Gunner226 asked me that. If I would have sex with any video game character, I could not choose one. I would have sex with a bunch of them. Don't make that face at me. Okay, okay. Um, you, here, we just... Uh, I know the Let me Batman. Do some damage to control here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I know the Batman game that everyone is excited for is Arkham City, but you might also want to pay attention to Gotham City Imposters. It's the multiplayer first-person shooter where you play as rival gangs dressed up as Batman or the Joker, and it's not quite as serious as previous Batman titles. Of course, by not quite as serious, you have weapons such as bear traps and electrified garden gnomes. Um, so think like Team Fortress 2, except with Batman and roller skates. Uh, Tara and I got to play it at E3, and it was pretty fun. I'm absolute shit at uh, competitive hey, first-person shooters, but I thought it was kind of goofy and colorful. It was sort of like playing, you know, Batman Nerf guns with retards or something. Um, it's going to be a downloadable title for XBLA, PSN, and PC, and it's coming out like early next year. Uh, but fortunately, there is a closed beta starting next month, so you can go to GothamCityImposters.com/beta and sign up. Do, do you do you guys like this game? Do you, do you do you want to? Play the game. Time for Peter Molyneux impressions. Peter Molyneux impressions. What? Which? What? Nobody really said anything. Thank though. you, gentlemen. Um, you guys are terrible in our chat. Bank, bank teller. teller. Okay. Go ahead. Wait for it. Okay. Oh, you'd, you'd like you'd like to wake, make a withdrawal, would you? Are are you sure you wouldn't like this hundred dollars in Sacagawea coins? They're much much more old fashioned and very very magical in a sense. They look like gold coins. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable right now. Okay, I, I don't know. Move on. What was that? Sandwich, Sandwich maker. maker. Okay. Would you, would you like the, the pepper pepperoncinis? You could have the pepperoncinis on your sandwich. I, I know it's it's a ranch chicken sandwich, but try the pepperoncinis. It, it goes amazingly. It's very innovative with the ranch dressing. Pepperoncinis are actually fucking delicious. No, they're great. I just think they're weird with ranch. Anyway. Tara, okay. let's do a thing. So, um, today is actually, you know, it's a special day. Um, I'm going to temporarily revive my show and tell segment that used to be a weekly thing. I haven't done it in a couple months now for many reasons, um, primarily laziness. But this week I got an email from Justin, who is a fan of the show, saying that he works at a small two-man studio in Singapore called Blank Level, and they just released an iOS game called Mr. Bistro. He describes the game as a mixture of puzzles and time management skills. You've got to help the chef, Mr. Bistro, manage his restaurant by passing him ingredients and serving out orders. You know, it's pretty simple. It uses a simple drag and drop mechanic, and there are two game modes that were apparently built with the game center in mind, so as to encourage competition with your friends. The game is only 99 cents on the App Store, and the proceeds go to the two developers' college tuitions. They're both students in Singapore right now, so you know, make yourself feel good by doing a good deed. Um, and, contest speaking of, they were all so nice enough to give us away five codes that we're gonna give to you guys. We're gonna do it, not like we normally do, just giving we're them doing, out, you we're know. Doing we're gonna do trivia style. So hop on in the chat. First question, what is my favorite food? See anybody answering? Uh, First person who gets it right wins the code. Okay. What's what's the next the next question? Okay. Uh, next get... question. How many islands does Singapore have? Don't use Google, even though I know use you will. Use Google. Uh, wow. Uh, the first winner was r random. Oh, well, well, god damn! Everyone guesses. That's the easiest. Okay. Uh, god. Pretty, Who is the it... first person to say pizza? Pizza uh, is Ghosty. my favorite food. Ghosty is the. Is that the first? That's the first person to say pizza. Ghosty. Go okay. Z Z Ghosty Z Z. Who? Anybody guess?
get the number of islands in Singapore correct yet? Uh, How many of you even knew there were islands? God damn, this there. is so dumb. You ask the dumbest questions. What's my real name? Well, I wanted to ask questions okay. related to the game, but I quickly ran out. Okay. What's my What's my real name? What? what? Uh, oh yeah, what's Max Scoville's real name? Hint. It's a sissy name. It's a girl name. Uh, oh, damn, you're a okay, reverse this is My real name is Blood Wolf. It's my turn to ask trivia questions. Are you ready for the trivia questions? Question number four. Walt Disney's last words were the name of my favorite actor. What actor was that? Okay, Itachi Sasuke Killer is the winner of the Singapore question. The boring question that you asked. Question number five, the final question. What is the name of the one Pokemon that's like a cow, but it has an afro? Let's see. I don't think we're doing trivia questions again. This is weird. Does it count if they misspelled your name? Uh, sure. I don't care. Okay, I don't, I spell then it wrong Narg too. won that Narg, one. Narg, you are the winner. Spelled it with an A. Um, the answer is uh, Julian. The answer is Julian. It's like a lady's name. It's actually pronounced Julien. Yeah, Julien. 63, there are 63 islands, 63 islands in, Singapore. in Singapore. I love because we hear his voice. Our producer is talking to us through these magic earworms. Tara's favorite food My is favorite pizza. My favorite food is pizza. We she said likes that. pizza. Um, Do we have winners for the two I asked that were actually yeah, trivia? Yeah, who, who is the Walt Disney thing? Uh, people are get, making some interesting guesses, guesses here. We have Johnny Depp, Fred Savage. Okay. Will Smith. We might really? go back and look at that. Let's uh, let's take some questions actually. Yeah, Do we actually, have any questions? Because you, you guys are just shouting weird things. Us? We're gonna send you guys the um, codes through YouTube, right? We're gonna use the internet to contact you guys. Yeah. So. If you happen to guess something first, expect to receive a Fear message. the Yoshi. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. We just uh, wished you a happy birthday. What are, what are we looking what are we forward looking to at PAX? What are we looking forward to at PAX? I am probably most excited about Borderlands 2. I'm looking forward to doing a panel in which Jim Sterling and I probably shout really stupid stuff yeah. in British accents. Tara's not on the panel. I'm not She's going to be sitting there. We should auction off who gets to sit next to her in the auditorium. I was seriously, I will for be charity sitting in the audience, or beer um, money, whichever. You know what? I, I am signed up to do another panel, but I don't know if I'm going to do it yet. Okay. It all depends. Well, we're going to have an awesome time. We're probably going to glue shit to Conrad Zimmerman's yeah. face. I don't know. That's the wonderful thing about PAX is that it's a community-driven event. So yeah. more than, you know, announcements, it's just hanging out with the community and going to parties and, you know, Yep, just we're going to go to parties and we're going to hang out I and I'm going to high-five everybody who's there who I see. Unless they're jerks. We got any more questions? Um, let's see. What do we have? Anything good questions about the questions? Uh, someone's just spamming us with swastikas. That's incredible. I didn't know you could make swastikas with a keyboard. Uh, oh, wow. Let's see. Who do we got? What? Da, 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 da. Jude IJM said, Max, if you could have sex with Catwoman, but you would have to be an owl for a day, would you do it? Yeah, I guess I would. Which Catwoman? Uh, pr probably Anne Hathaway. Oh. I mean, I feel kind of like a jerk saying that because the obvious answer uh, is like Michelle Pfeiffer. Moreover, Halle Berry. Are you, are you drunk? Uh, Halle Berry's like one of the hottest women alive. I, You're I know, but just as her, her as Catwoman, it just ruins it for me. That Why? was such a bad fucking movie. Okay, well, I'm. Totally Anne Hathaway. Specifically she was about in the looks. Princess Diaries. Also, I love that movie, and I, I own the second to, one on DVD. I tried to download the Princess Diaries because I wanted to see what it was like because it takes place in San Francisco, but I downloaded it dubbed in Polish. Oh, yeah. But it's not like dubbed in Polish. It was just a guy, one guy, translating everything everyone was saying in Polish. It was really weird. I'll loan you my DVD copy. I would like that. I'm going to borrow her copy of the Princess Diary. I think that wraps up favorite video game characters, Super Let's Team Go by Hermit Homeboy. Okay. Go. But what is, I don't even know what that means. Favorite video game characters, super team. Um, I don't know what that means. Okay. Oh, like. I want to get uh, um, Lakutu, Le Le the flying motherfucker from, uh, from Mario, and then there was those stupid ass birds from Ninja Gaiden, and then one of the attack helicopters from, uh, from Saints Row 2, and they'd be the team of motherfuckers I hate who shoot shit at me while I'm trying to not die. Because they're jerks. Fascinating. Um, uh, anybody else? Anybody uh, else? Give Jim uh, Sterling a segment on the show. Says Gregory Martz, 2011. No. 
Um, Smileyman45 asks, will you or any Detroit staffers be at Eurogamer Expo 2011? Not that I know of. Uh, we check all, the we site. have a couple check people the in Detroit Europe. We've got Holly, Benny, There's Holly Bennett over in the UK going on. and a couple people in Germany, yeah. I think. But we have many Europeans. We have a vast Max army of Detroiters. Usually. That about wraps up our show for today. Our wonderful, just gangly, weird, <laughs> rambling, ask questions yeah. to people and not answer them. Um, you should still subscribe to us on YouTube and tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for other episodes, which we make in the future, and we'll be in them, and I'll talk about Saints Row on, on Wednesday. Um, you should also go to our Facebook page and say that you like us, because we look like a bunch of fucking dorks, because only like 2,000 people said that they like us, so we'll click the yeah, fucking like button. Yeah, seriously, we need friends. Uh, and follow us on Twitter. I'm Max Scoville, and she's Tara Longest, and we are The Detoid Show. <laughs> Um, and if you, if you want any more live video antics, go check out the Destructoid channel on twitch.tv slash destructoid, where things are happening all the time. Right now, it's MASH Tactics with Mr. John Carnage, who will probably take his shirt off. There's also a cute redhead on that show as She's, well. So. Yeah. If you want to watch the other Destructoid show with the gangly With the other ginger and tall guy, guy. And then the little cute ginger one, then go yeah. watch that. So that's um, about it. Yeah, we'll be in touch with you winners soon. In the meantime, have an awesome weekend, everybody. We'll be back on Monday. <laughs>